So today, as Tima Perlins, we strongly believe that countries, all countries of the world should immediately ratify the UN Convention on the Protection of Migrant Workers and their families. By immediately, we mean that uh, this case should be taken into consideration as the flows of migration has significantly uh, increased uh, through, uh, in, uh, through the period of time. Uh, and this convention actually now would ensure uh, the rights to people that have migrated, the basic human rights, right to religion, equal job opportunities, access to education and healthcare. We advocate the basic human rights to all immigrants, which means that we, uh, uh, we uh, give a possibility to preserve uh, dignity to all legal and illegal immigrants, as we acknowledge that they are all human beings. And another notion, uh, that uh, those countries should ratify the convention, we believe that they have a moral obligation to do so. And we believe that there'll be a UN monitoring the situation to make sure that countries of the world are completing uh, the requirements of the convention they, ha uh, they uh, have no <coughs> obligation to ratify. And we have two main arguments in our, uh, in our case today. The first one is the moral justification why those countries should ratify uh, the convention. And the second one is it will be about the benefits, what we will get after ratifying, what all the countries will get after ratifying uh, the convention. So going on our first argument about the moral obligation. The conditions which, which those migrants are facing today are quite bad because uh, they face human rights abuses, uh, inequality, they are deprived from their basic needs. Uh, as an example, we can mention that 40% of refugee camps which facilitate legal immigrants uh, are just being mistreated. They are deprived from their basic rights. They don't, don't, don't have a proper shelter. They don't have food, water, etc. What is more, in China, those migrants have no rights at all. They have no security in their working places. They are deprived for, from everything they, they could get if the convention was ratified. And uh, we acknowledge universal human rights. We believe that every person has a right to liberty, uh, to life, and to pursuit of happiness, regardless of any circumstances, i.e. the place of, uh, of his birth, uh, the country he lives in, or the, uh, or the government he has to submit. We believe that the fact that people move away from a country uh, because of economic opportunities other country offers should not deprive them from their, uh, from preserving their human dignity and their basic human rights. We are obliged to all people, not only to citizens, to citizens. As people, migrants are also worthy of the protection as they are contributing to our society by living in it. What is more, um, by, ratify, by, by ratifying uh, uh, the convention, we would diminish the unfairness that now exists within the, the, a lot of countries. Now, Western countries actually now are being uh, hypocritical. They are not ratifying the convention, and uh, even though they stand for those human rights, they are still being abused there. For example, we can mention France, in which they were not allowed to express their religion as hijabs were uh, banned there. And we, we see this as a bad thing and a hypocritical thing that Western countries are doing. All countries of the world, by ratifying the convention, would be increasing their responsibility amongst one another and the as the international pressure with the cure and the re responsibility uh, against one, the citizen of one country uh, uh, against uh, the citizen of another country, towards the citizen of another country. And that's what we believe people will be more willing to uh, appreciate those migrants and will be able more to uh, uh, accept them into the society. And go now with our second argument about the benefits. The first point in this argument that we will gain social benefits, as uh, these people, according to the convention, would have a right to education, and that would be the investment into our future societies, as we would have more specialists within them. Uh, what is more, we, uh, because of that, we will have more integration. The first, uh, uh, the first, uh, I'll, I'll talk about the children, and second of all, about the parents. The children will get more integration as they will go to uh, schools within that country, and they will get more uh, accustomed to the culture which is within that country, and other people will get to know about the culture also. And
and uh, thus less mis of misunderstandings that between those cultures with the cure because people will get to know about these cultures and thus of rights or the price will the cure also. And about the parents, as government will protect them, they will have rights, they, they will best, uh, they'll be less rioting uh, against the unjust laws that are now being passed. Uh, because uh, less of, of such laws will be uh, within the societies. Second uh, benefit would be the economic. There will be at first labor unions. The people will have the chance to express their opinion, uh, opinion and their needs. They will be incentivized to seek for more, to seek for more job opportunities, to ask for a higher wage or etc. They will have the safety, and thus they will be willing to work more and to do their best in, in what, what they are doing and uh, the, to make the, mo the most of it. What is more about the healthcare? Uh, people will be provided with uh, healthcare, as for example in China it is so that if people, for example, get sick or uh, get some injuries out job, they are just being thrown out of it. We believe that it is a not good thing. People must get that protection so as they would not get injured in that work. Or, second of all, that uh, they would still remain their job after, for example, being sick or etc. Uh, uh, and the last point uh, in this argument is about the family reunions. Uh, people will be really uh, more willing to work and uh, they, they'll feel uh, if families move, move with, will move within the countries, they will be contributing to our society more as less of the remittance taxes will, uh, will be sent to their home country. They will be contributing to our society even more. So for all these reasons, that we will ha have benefits and that we have a moral obligation to ratify this convention, we beg you to propose the motion. Uh, get fired 
if they don't have, uh, they get sick. What about people? Don't that uh, doesn't that happen the same with people? Well, yes, it does happen with people. So both migrants and people actually don't have that much of a rights in China. Yes, and we believe that they should have those rights also. It, it's not mutually exclusive. And we believe that those people like should be uh, all you. all people should be protected within and the country. But this case is about Thank migrants. We're debating uh, about migrants. Uh, the labor unions. How actually when migrants ask for more money is beneficial for the countries and for the economy of the countries? Well, uh, they'll of course be uh, spending more money within the country because they'll gain more. That's the, and we'll get more taxes from that also. And uh, if we're speaking about the places where most of the migrants go, I, what do you can, uh, uh, like, oh, yes, you said mentioned that countries have moral obligation, right? Yes. And they have the obligation to give as much as they can give. No, we believe that they have an obligation to acknowledge basic human rights. Uh, but uh, to acknowledge basic rights, but how, mo about how much they can give? Do they have the means? Well, we believe we will be given them the means by making them ratify the convention. In. No, I'm speaking. I'm sorry, but that was the last question. Okay, uh, three minutes. I'm sorry. Okay, can I can I borrow you for for my speech? Okay. that a state 
state gives as much as it can give. And right now we're here to prove that in an economical situation, in an economical crisis, states do give rights to migrants and do give rights to citizens. But in this economical situation, this is as much as we can get. The migrants, this is as much as they can get and this is as much as the citizen can get without overloading the economical system of the states and thus making the social status of that state even worse as it is right now. So moving on for to the moral justification. They say that uh, they say that it is moral it is moral to give to, to the migrants. We're saying that states do give right now to the migrants. European Union has rights that protect that protects migrants. The EU is right now equalizing them, the equalizing the labor rights with the migrants and the citizens. America is equalizing the, the labor rights with the migrants and the citizens. They're saying that illegal migrants don't get healthcare or social care. Well, actually, if we're talking about legal migrants, in order for uh, one person to be to be employed legally, his employer has to pay him social care and health care. Otherwise, he's an illegal migrant, not a legal migrant. Moving on to their example with the refugees, they're saying that re uh, migrant workers live in the refugee campus. Well, actually, these migrant workers are abusing the system of the state. Refugees are a different group of the society, and this different group are, are this different group is protected by different laws. And to this different group, uh, the state gives gives shelter and food, and migrants shouldn't be given this shelter and food freely. They should work for this shelter and food, and therefore they're abusing the system that the state is providing for the refugees. Moving on to the point about the China and how, uh, how migrants are being deprived for working places. Well, actually, China, we all know the situation in China is, uh, is so socially bad that citizens don't enjoy their basic human rights. Citizens, not yet alone migrants, they don't enjoy the freedom of movement, they don't enjoy the freedom of speech. And we're saying that this is a situation because China, as it is right now, they can provide as much as they can. And we can't say that they will, we can't give more to migrants than we give to citizens. Moving on to the moving on to the to the Western countries and hypocritical situation that they're not allowed to express their religion. Countries do whatever they need to do in order to protect their societal values and in order to break the social location in the society. And having social location mini, means having national uh, having to. Uh, have be, uh, searching reasons to, prote uh, to protect the, the security of the country. And they did this for national security reasons. They did this because of the terrorism. Therefore, if a country protects their societal values and their society, and their society, the primary goal, uh, to protect their society is the primary goal, this, uh, uh, this uh, strict measure that they did are totally, are, uh, are totally uh, approved. So moving on to the benefits. They're saying that there will be social benefits because of the right of education. The right of education is already being provided by the states. None of the states, not the European member states, not the American states, and the Australian states do not deny the migrant children the right to education. They never deny this fact. Actually, migrants don't use this, don't use this right to education, and they don't send them children to education. So this is not the state fault, but actually the refusal of the migrants fault that they refuse to, they refuse to integrate. So moving on to the parents and how the parents will be more, uh, how the parents will not be rioting, and this will be beneficial for them. First of all, right now. Migrants are being migrants. Primary concern is to go to another state, work to their state, and uh, they do not. Uh, they do not want to. Uh, they do not want to integrate. They just want to work. And right now, they're being uh, choose uh, by the by the employers over the nation, the, uh, over the citizens, because the, the migrants agree to work for less that money. They agree on this on their own. They agree to work for less that money. And if we equalize them with their rights, then the employers would have to give equal money to the to the citizens and the migrants, therefore making the migrants less competitive to the natives and thus give, taking away the migrants the primary goal they came here for, taking away the primary goal which is the job. They will be losing their job. This is in any case an economical benefit for them. Moving on to the economical benefit for the country. How is this a more economical benefit if a country actually is finding itself in an economical crisis? And in an economical crisis, no one can provide more rights, no one can provide more rights, give more rights, meaning unemployment benefits, more rights, um, meaning the right to family reunification, more rights meaning, uh, more rights meaning the, uh, that if a migrant co commits a crime that the state has to facil facilitate him in the prison of that state, this, uh, this dear judges, cost, this costs a lot. And in the an economical situation, we can allow this problem to happen. I will explain further in my, in my case later on. They started about the health care in China. As we explained and, and, and we say in the cross examination, Chinese people don't enjoy these rights and Americans pay their own health security. So moving on to our case, we explain you how there is an economical crisis and in this economical crisis, citizens are being deprived for their rights, citizens sacrifice. Germany actually right now, they change their age limit for their, 
for the retirement from 60 to 65. They did this because they want to decrease the deficit of the budget of the pensions. England, they decreased the benefits for the students and they increased the prices for the, fac for the faculties. This states that the countries are even decreasing the rights of the citizens. If they decrease the rights of the citizens, then this situation is economically really hard. In this economical situation, we cannot increase the rights of the, citizens, the, of the migrants because it will come to a huge uh, overload to the welfare system of the economies of the states. And furthermore, if the migrants see that the states is ratifying something and by that is, is, is worsening the situation to the economical to this state because right now, uh, because they will be showing them that they care more for the migrants since the citizens will be decreasing their rights and the migrants will be increasing their rights, xenophobia will arise even more. Because right now xenophobia, as you know, is very more or is very far on the run and if it comes to a situation where migrants' rights are being increased in situation of this huge economical crisis and the citizens' rights are being decreased, but citizens will, will hate migrants even more. And this is, it, this is not a uh, social social benefit, nor for the migrants, nor for the citizens. What we here stand for is a society, what we here stand for is a society uh, where, is a society where we, uh, where we have good economical situation for these reasons, I'm to oppose, thank you. Because this is an assumption. 
you don't give any proof that actually um, okay, and where, where is your proof that actually migrants work below the minimum wage? Well, would you not believe that if there is a shortage of work, as you said, okay, because there is a crisis? No, 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 I'm not saying that there is a shortage in work uh, in workplaces. I'm showing that there is a shortage in the economy. Everyone right now is losing their jobs. It's not that everyone, that, it's not that they, we have extra jobs to, to give. Today we are debating about that uh, the UN Convention should have been ratified and should be ratified. That means what we have to prove as a firm <coughs> is that actually countries have this moral obligation to ensure these basic human rights and that it will be profitable for them. Now, what the uh, the negative team has come to us is a very uh, a lot of exaggerations of how much these basic rights for these immigrants will cost. 
And ladies and gentlemen, we see uh, we see them talking about only the U.S. and EU in general. And they, what they've been saying is that there are enough rights. But then again, they're saying that the citizens are not having enough rights and that the citizens should be prioritized over all sorts of immigrants. But what we say is that immigrants are just as people and are just as and deserve these human rights, just as the citizens uh, of the nation. And we don't think that we should uh, give them more rights to the citizens because this UN convention ensures the basic rights that a person should have in such a, in a country. So, ladies and gentlemen, now on the first argument about how they have a moral obligation. So, the uh, uh, negative team did not really rebut how they do not have a moral obligation for these immigrants. What they said is that it's going to cost a lot. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can't really weigh the life of a person and a cost, how much it's going to cost, especially is that their main argument is a crisis, which is a temporary setback. And, ladies and gentlemen, they did not really explain on how these rights uh, will cost so much. They didn't give us statistics on how granting the basic rights to life, to religion, and to labor unions is going to cost the country a lot. They didn't really give us numbers on how much we will waste on these rights, ladies and gentlemen. So we believe that actually we have an obligation to protect these uh, basic rights as we do uh, as we do, for example, in the US and the EU, state that we are uh, we are pro-democratic values, we have to protect these rights, and but we only do it to the citizens. Now, um, the, uh, another thing what they said is that employers have to give uh, health care and they have to pay for health care. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is not true. After especially the US implemented the Medicaid uh, resolution which the state gives Medicaid uh, for the people. And ladies and gentlemen, we see the uh, huge problems, for example, Ireland does not give a lot of benefits. To, to the people does not necessarily in, ensure health care. And we see a lot of differences in the US. For example, the New York state has a lot less benefits uh, in health care for these migrants. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they rebutted our argument, uh, our example about refugees. Well, we didn't really talk about refugees. We talked about some immigrants that are in refugee camps, and that is possible as immigrants firstly go to refugee camps if they want to get a refugee status. If they don't, they can apply for a legal status. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what they said about the China situation, they said that China's situation is bad for its citizens. So, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it's bad for its citizens, but it's not mutually exclusive. We are debating the topic about migrants' rights, and today we don't really say that we don't need to give rights to the citizens. But uh, if we're debating about the rights of migrants, we have to prove that we actually need to give these rights to the migrants. And they said China can't give that. So ladies and gentlemen, we don't really see any reasoning behind this because China is the second most powerful economy in the world. And we don't really see why it can't ensure see, such basic rights, which like, it don't really cost that much. Now, and, and the, uh, the, our, our example about nightclubs and burkas banned in France, they said it's for their own security. So there are basically a uh, thousand and five hundred people in France that are wearing, in, in Paris, that are wearing these burkas, and we don't really see how this is very significant. So we see that they, even these countries that have uh, have uh, some protection of these rights. They can't go out, out of their laws, and we see that this convention will pr put pressure on them to actually cement these laws and to actually make them be implemented. Now, our second point about how it will profit. So first of all, what we said is that education uh, will be provided. So ladies and gentlemen, they said that education is provided in the U e European Union and the US, but there are many barriers. For example, people come with their families after, the, uh, after they are uh, after they have passed the age of primary education and they actually can't get primary education because they're too old, ladies and gentlemen. And w what we are talking about is the whole world because all of the nations should ratify it and we can't, you can't really talk about only that. Now, what they said that grown-ups don't want to integrate, it integrate. So, ladies and gentlemen, we don't really see why they don't want to integrate because if they don't integrate, they face discrimination, they face xenophobia. And we believe if they integrate through education, ladies and gentlemen, because they get to know their culture, they get to, get to actually bond with the people, we see that they're going to ride a lot less especially that they're given these rights because in 2005 in France, ladies and gentlemen, immigrants actually rioted, burned cars and a lot of people were around because, because they wanted more rights and the government did not provide. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what they have said is that uh, we give, we, uh, we can't give them as much as money as to the citizens because they'll lose their competitive advantage. So, ladies and gentlemen, Migrants are not necessarily low skilled workers, first of all, that is assumption, they can be high skilled workers and we have to give them the right to ask for a bigger payment if they want to. If they don't want to, they just get the labor unions to protect their rights in the workplace, which is a necessary right and a basic right, economic right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, and on their uh, argument about the economic crisis, 
uh, they said that the citizens right now suffer. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, we don't believe we're giving them more rights than the citizens, so it's not really equitable, and it's not mutually exclusive. We don't say that we have to uh, focus only on the immigrants, but this topic is about immigrants. So ladies and gentlemen, we can, we can do both, ladies and gentlemen. And, and their point on xenophobia was not really based on anything, uh, because what we said is that they're not going to be uh, after they integrate, they're not going to be discriminated. And they didn't really say anything about our point about family reunions and remittances. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll be happy to go on another. Ready? So, uh, talking about that our examples were more for EU and USA, what happens to 80% of the migrants? Where do they go? What age? 80% of the migrant population. Well, actually, Where it's, they go? Well, actually it's 60 percent, and just and because, and just because, the USA, Europe, and Australia. So right? just because 40 percent of the world is, uh, of the world's migrants is somewhere else doesn't mean that we can't focus on them. We have to okay. protect their rights too, and it's a major okay. part. It's almost can half I, can of the I migrants. Can I go to my next question? So let's talk about the citizens right now. Let's talk about China, for example. Yes, please. Ch the citizens in China do not have the right. They don't enjoy the right of freedom of movement, right? Oh, well, in some cases, yes. In some cases. So they don't enjoy the right of freedom of voice, of choice, right? Of choice. Right. Freedom of choice. For example, well, they, they can speak against their well, government, right? What we said about the case... Can you answer the question, right? Yes or no? They no, can't I don't, speak against I don't, I'm their not obliged to answer yes or no questions. I see where you're heading. We're not... This case is not mutually exclusive. We're we don't have to... The case we don't have to debate question. about citizens of the country. We're not giving more rights than the citizens are getting. Okay, I get you. And we're, we're, we, it doesn't mean that we don't have to focus on the citizens. It's just that the topic implies okay. that we're talking about. Okay, my next question is the following. Migrants. In the society, citizens and migrants live together, right? Yes. And if the economical situation is good, the societal situation will be good as well, right? Well, not necessarily. What, what do you mean? How do you mean? Let's well, just because everybody gets a lot of money doesn't mean okay, that they have Okay, let's see. for example, it has a crappy economical situation. Do they have a good social situation? Well, I don't really see why they have a very bad social situation. They you don't see why they have bad well, situation. Athens is social, fire and burning. Social, social situation is the only thing that they're rioting, they're protesting and against. And why are they rioting? They're protesting against the government. In and why are they the social, protesting against the government? The because the government's down doesn't give them the money for the development of the economy. So everything actually moves around the economy. Let's um, move on to the next well, question. Please. Let's move on to the next question. What is the difference between a refugee and a migrant worker? Like a migrant worker should apply for a visa first and then get the status of a migrant worker from the state, right? Um, yeah. And the refugees doesn't have to apply, just has to pass the border and say, we're well, refugees. Well, first of all, these migrants can live near and in refugee camps and they can't pay but for that. Is the, this is the question that I'm answering. The refugees, the difference is that migrants have to apply for a visa and then get the status of a migrant worker. our example And refugees have to just jump to the state and say, we're refugees, we need your help, right? What our example was is that 40% of those migrants that are not refugees in refugee camps, they face discrimination. And we see, and it is an example from Spain. You know, okay, I'm confusing my time. So let's talk about xenophobia, for example. Why, why is xenophobia arising? Fear of the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. Fear of the unknown, xenophobia. Oh, yeah. And why do people don't know people? Because they don't communicate, right? Yeah. So if the migrants and the people right now don't communicate because they hate each other, don't you think that if we increase the rights of the migrants that the citizens will hate them even well, more? And we, integration will okay, be a lot I, I get your question. If we increase their rights, for example, the right to education, the then, rights of education then, then they will... The rights of education are already being provided. Well, you can't deny that fact. No, actually, I give okay, you examples on why they're not. And I have the right to answer the question. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if we give them the right to education, that means that they are going to communicate in this society for
да растат, затоа што тоа е во фрегумен на свет во објат. Плюс, во лимонен товар не помијата. Зашто? Затоа што прават во лимонен пајец, затоа што учите во лимонен, води до тоа физичките резерви што постоја во држава, што социјалната резерви се троша, а во стоша социјалната резерви, ако сертификува кубеница, да што никаде не трапат, тоа била анифтонен бенефиц, значи не може толку да се троша социјалната резерви. Ке дојде до колапсни системот, ако не се системи, ке дојде со другото не се купува од еден, од два, да дошло и ранте, не е се економијатно, не е дојде да дојде конкуренција против инфекцијата, кој се да дојде си трова, што други ќе ги бува да одпише толку и да бува да не конкуренција, да што не смат да дошло жалата, не сме да ги импортира. Тоа се спори за медик и откер, медик и откер и за пирска што говориш, не каже, 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 за пирска Тоа е причина за тоа што постои селфобија и како што го есме селфобија тоа порасна како тоа да се умиеме на пратно ми знаат да умиеме на пратно ми штети тоа плус овој некој од тоа што ми е жалат. Постои проблеми дека кина не може, не знам за кина ништо не може. Постои за кина не се прави за едно добро што го случи. Ништо не е добро што се пак е за едно добро што не е добро. Не е добро што се прави за едно добро што не е добро. Не е добро што се прави за едно добро што не е добро. Не е добро што се прави за едно добро што не е добро. Не е добро што се прави за едно добро што не е добро. Не е добро Може да спориш, а да, прегледи целото тоа, но целото тоа во ние потикаме, за сето тоа треба да води до добра социјална состава. А добрата социјална состава мора во државата да дружи со добра социјална состава и за гранените за мигрантите. А добрата социјална состава нема да бе дружена, ако тоа е до прегледа на главска економија за државата, ако тоа е до граѓи да дружува да води така, тоа е до отскоренување на сенкови во државата, тоа се дружи за раја за усилава.
pay their uh, pay for, uh, on their own for the healthcare, which means that the, the, if uh, this commercial will be ratified, the migrants will be ratified from the state, which is pretty unfair because the citizens do pay for the uh, do pay healthcare for their own, and this is something that uh, will not uh, will not happen. Then speaking of education, we have proved that actually migrants are the ones who don't send uh, the, the, the children to the schools because actually they're facing xenophobia from the natives. Let's, now, now let's look why actually uh, xenophobia. Uh, xenophobia actually is uh, is a uh, fear of the uh, fear of the unknown. And what will happen actually if the uh, if this uh, convention is ratified? Well, uh, first first of all, because now, right now we're in an economic crisis, and they were giving examples in the first negative speech about the uh, what happens in pension funds in Germany that they were actually uh, in, increasing increasing the year from six, from sixty to sixty five in order to, to decrease the deficit of the of the pension funds, which means that uh, even the citizens are uh, have some benefits cut. And what will happen uh, if the convention is ratified that actually citizens will have some benefits cut and migrants will have their benefits arise. We don't say that the migrants will have more rights than the citizens, but in an in economic crisis where uh, citizens uh, give up from their from the benefits that should enjoy from the state, it will actually uh, happen a revolt from the natives uh, uh, from the natives to the migrants, which will uh, which will even increase the xenophobia in the country. We can take a look at the example in Russia where there were riots from uh, from the natives against the migrants because there were many, uh, there were some rights given more to the migrants and actually it, it is because the natives uh, are cut some benefits uh, are cut some benefits because of the economic crisis. So in order to prove right now that there really is economic crisis and this convention cannot be right now uh, not right ratified, I'm going to provide you first with a few examples. First of all, let's take a look at the economic situation in USA. What we have what we have heard lately is that actually America don't even have the money to pay for their military. So imagine what will happen if they ratify the convention. They should they should be actually given even more rights to the to the migrants. And, uh, and it's not only that the, that the state will not have uh, the benefits, but also there will be a situation where migrants will suffer certain harms. So right now migrants are uh, in in a certain advantage because they're chosen over the natives because migrants consciously uh, on their own uh, agree to receive uh, to receive smaller wages, which means that if, if the convention is ratified because they will have the same treatment, they, and employers will have to pay the same. Actually, uh, the, uh, the employers will choose always natives over migrants. If they choose the natives, actually the migrants lose the reason why they go to the country actually to work, which will even create a bigger problem to the states. It is the unemployment rate of migrants, and not just the unemployment rate. According to the convention, they will have to give unemployment benefits. And in times of economic crisis, another unemployment benefits are certainly not a benefit for the country. We can all we can also see uh, the example with Greece, uh, with the European Union, which suffers from big economic crisis because of the Greek economy, where we cannot really see that there is a good social situation because there is no good economical uh, situation because people are rioting out because they're, they're, uh, they should make even uh, bigger uh, because they have even bigger economical costs. Because we have proven you today that there are, there are actually economical crisis and the convention cannot be right now ratified, no from the big states, no from the Asian countries, I beg you to oppose the motion. Okay, 
Okay, let me ask you. The countries do not see these people as terrorists, but they are afraid of terror of terrorism mostly because of okay, the okay, thank you. In the two countries we have thank we had certain attacks. Thank you, thank you. And if we get integrated that people through education, we'll get we'll get less of uh, Okay, education is regularly provided in most other countries, but the minorities are the ones who refuse to go to send their kids to the Indian education, so they're actually the ones who refuse okay, to integrate in the you. country. What kind of rights do you people have in uh, migrants have in Russia? Uh, actually, <coughs> migrants are not the ones who have rights in Russia, but the natives who arrived in the gas of migrants because the migrants have certain increases in the rights. The natives are cut some benefit because of the economic crisis. Why would employers choose a uh, rather native uh, worker than a uh, migrant worker? Uh, this will happen if the convention is ratified because right now the migrants on their own are agree uh, agree to uh, are agree. Okay. Agree to actually uh, work for a lower wage. It doesn't mean that they work under the minimum wage, but they agree on the lower wage. How much does giving rights to people actually cost? Uh, it costs a lot. How much? Well, for example, according to, according to the convention, first of all, we have uh, the, uh, all of the economic benefits that they should enjoy, then we have the unemployment benefits, and we have right now economical crisis where uh, the countries cannot really provide all of these economic okay, benefits. Okay, how much does providing people with their basic rights cost? Okay, uh, the people enjoy mostly their basic rights, of course, not in all the countries, for example, not in the Asian countries. Okay, thank you. Why, the why, the left, thank you, thank you. why the left 40% of people should be depreciated and deprived from any, they are not from any human rights at all? Why okay. are you ignoring uh, These 40 people who go mostly into the Asian countries, which are the problem, actually, the, even the citizens do not enjoy their own basic rights. Like okay, thank you, thank you. Speech. Why? Uh, let, 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 let me finish my question. I and then, how right. uh, my answer is, then how can you expect a migrant when the convention is ratified to have even more rights than a citizen? Thank you very much. How much time do we have? You guys have uh, four minutes left.
position was a bit inconsistent with their position. Because firstly, they said that now the immigrants have all the rights they need. And then secondly, they said that if we give them more rights, it's going to cost a lot. So wait a second. Is there a shortage of those rights or not? Please answer that. And secondly, firstly, they said that uh, immigrants will not have more rights than citizens, as we pointed out in the cross-examination. But, but, the, but the second speaker came out and said that, well, we're granting the immigrants more rights than to citizens, and that is not good. So ladies, and, uh, ladies, please be more consistent with your position. And now moving on to the clash points. OK, today we'll present you two clash points. Firstly, is the economy the issue in judging whether we have to ratify the convention? And secondly, what are going to be the benefits of this convention if we implement it? So okay, let's go back to the first issue of the economy. When we came out in the first speech, we said we have a moral obligation to these people. They aid us, they benefit us, they pay taxes, and they work. In fact, um, for example, in UK, the, uh, the immigrants make 8% of the population. However, they contribute 10% of the GDP of, uh, to, uh, to the budget of the UK. That is, they benefit in some cases even more than the citizens. Then maybe they uh, really are equal to citizens and we have a right, a, an obligation to benefit them too. So we see in this case double standards. As the state does not want to provide the basic rights for those immigrants, they do not want to uh, protect them from, uh, as we gave you the examples in USA with healthcare and education, there are shortages and loops in the system. I mean, what, with the convention would fix those loops and make those citizens get what they need, uh, make those immigrants get what they need. Then, but then we gave you the example of hijabs in France. We said that their basic rights are being uh, harmed. And then there was example of Russia, where people are, where uh, illegal immigrants were actually threatened to not to be not to get their payments. Actually, we see that the, even democratic countries cause harm and de deny and neglect the rights of those immigrants, and we see a problem with that. So as I showed you the problem, we have to solve it. Um, and as we see that uh, some countries are actually hypocritical with their position, we have to solve this problem. Now what the opposition only brought, they didn't clash exactly our moral point, but what they said, that it's going to be costly. Well, firstly, ladies and gentlemen, they never showed us the cost. They said, oh, well, we have economic crisis. But firstly, we said that economic crisis is, is a temporary thing. Secondly, we said that they, these countries have a moral obligation, and I just proved you that. And thirdly, they never showed us the costs of this of this convention. So we believe it does stand. Because actually, labor, a right to join the labor unions, or a right to get the education, or any right, any basic human right that, that the convention ensures is not that costly. And that's why we say that the uh, argument of the cost does not actually stand. Now what they said was that, well, natives, uh, the rights of the natives have been decreased throughout this period. But actually, these the rights that were decreased were actually a different case. And secondly, those decreasing rights will apply to those immigrants also as to the natives after implementing the convention or even now. Because if we're like uh, if we're decreasing the pensions, so if 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 the, if the immigrants in some countries get the pensions, they will decrease for them too. So we don't <coughs> have any mutual exclusive from those citizens. And now as we as I proved to you that uh, it will not be more costly and, and that immigrants will not be granted more rights, then it means that no tensions will be created as the opposition made an assumption. And we are saying that tensions are, what brings me to my second substantive point about benefits, that tensions are happening now as we give you the example of France, where people were, uh, where immigrants were uh, protesting for more rights. So as we see that if uh, we give them more rights, if we ratify the, the convention, actually the people will, have, will be able to join the labor union will have a right to education, which actually means that they have more opportunities to, let's say, um, to be their, right, their rights granted, to ask for a b bigger payment. And we do not see this as a minus. We see this as a plus, that they have legal, uh, that they have equal rights, which is citizens. And actually, education, um, uh, uh, education fosters integration into the society because only through interfering with different people you make the society integrate. And the, and, and the fact that um, 
and the fact that people will have more rights will make them happier. And through being more happier, these people will be more effective. That's what we believe in. Since the opposition never told us anything about family reunion, and we believe that is the benefit of, of this convention, we believe that, con that this convention will be beneficial for the states. That's why we're proud to propose. Migrants primary move for money and for earning, and we know that they do it from their own will. So they're not refugees, they're migrants, they move from their own will, the legal migrants, and if the conditions were so bad, they would probably go back. Like, they wouldn't stay if the conditions were so bad, they couldn't take it anymore. So we can see from them that actually they, are, they like the situation because they earn money, they send some money back.